Okay, so welcome back to Refrigeration Training. We have, and to 3D Interactive Learning Technologies, we have uh, now achieved our vacuum. So uh, from the last week you saw where we did our vacuum pump, we're down at a vacuum. So what we have done, uh, and again, there's a, another video to show you how to do that. We've removed our tar gauge because we didn't want to put any positive pressure onto our tar gauge. We've refitted our service, our low side service gauge on. We're now going to use our recovery bottle that we'd already recovered refrigerant into. Again, this was labeled as recovered refrigerant and it was labeled as good for reuse. So it's basically refrigerant that we had removed from our system while we carried out our remedial repairs. And now we're putting the same refrigerant that we recovered back into the actual system. We have our weighing scales here. We make sure before we put the bottle on that our weighing scales is at zero. So we set it to zero, you can see it's at zero. And again, we put the weighing scales on here and we can see how much refrigerant in it. So our weight of the bottle is 10.53 kgs, 10.54. And the uh, uh, bottle when it's empty is 9.16. You take 9.16 from 10.54 and the difference is the amount of refrigerant that we have. We take our service hose off here now you will note again what I have done is I have connected my service to the vapor port here again, okay? The reason for that is what I want to do is this line here, as soon as I took that off the vacuum pump, it drew in air. So there's one bar of, 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 of uh, positive pressure in this thing. So there's, there's air in this line. I want to purge this line, okay? So there's probably seven or eight bar of refrigerant inside in the actual bottle. So I don't need to purge it for a long time, but I don't want to purge liquid. I only want to purge vapor. So I open the bottle, the vapor here, this thing, the line is full is here, but remember I have this close and this close. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slightly, and whatever little bit of air that's in this, so there's one bar pressure now being forced out by eight bar pressure. So one bar of air, there we go. So again, it's just a slight little purge. It's not that there's a load of air, it's just basically the air is going to be heavier than the refrigerant. The refrigerant's at a higher pressure. It's pushing whatever air that was in this out. And by just giving that little slight purge, you're just expelling whatever potential air is. And the, and, and the length of time will determine how much is, when it's air and when it's vapor. So that little purge was, was, was enough from my point of view. So now I'm happy that the system is free of air. Okay, now. The next thing I need to do is, this is a zeotropic blend, it's 404A, you must liquid charge. So in order for me to liquid charge, in this particular bottle, I turn it upside down. Now by turning it upside down, what's actually happening is, my vapor port is now becoming a liquid port. Okay, so I've now turned it upside down. You also need to note that by turning it upside down, and actually fitting the hose line on that, that my weight, remember I said it was it was 10.54. The actual hose line the, uh, has added weight to this. So now the actual weight that I have here is 10.62. So that's including the weight of the hose line that has actually been connected to the bottle. So I'm going to start with 10.62, 10.63 now that it's settled. That's what I'm going to start with. And I take my 9.16 off that and that'll tell me how much refrigerant. There is other methods that you can do. So you can see there's a start button here where I can actually zero this and, and uh, press start. And it goes the opposite way whereby it'll start at zero. And then the amount of refrigerant that goes in, it, that goes in will actually count it up. So again, uh, that's the other way of doing it. So some weighing scales give you that function. Others just are, are a basic function. So I'm just keeping it basic for the moment. But we do have the function of putting this back to zero, pressing the start button, and, uh, and the, the weighing scales is able to calculate how much refrigerant you're putting in. So again, it depends on what you get used to and, and knowing your own equipment and so on. Okay, we're now, I'm satisfied, I'm now ready to charge liquid in. So there are two ways of doing this. There's what's called bomb charge and there's called fl flash charge or initial charge and flash charge. So bomb charge is that you try and get as much of refrigerant into the system uh, equalize into the high side of the system as much liquid in as possible and then flash in the remaining. Every unit should have a label on it. Every refrigeration system should have a label on it. So when I go to do this, I'm doing it by weight. It should say on it how much refrigerant weight is in this. So this system is either a kg, it's 2 kg, it's 3 kg of refrigerant. So post April 2008, any refrigeration system under FGAS regulation that you're in charge of maintaining and servicing or you install into the system, you must make sure that you put a label where it is visible by an engineer. Um, and on the details must be the type of gas the uh, quantity of gas, the CO2 equivalency uh, of the gas, and the words contains uh, fluorinated, uh, hy um, hydrofluorinated carbon gas as per Kyoto Protocol. Uh, so they're the basic requirements on the label. Again, if you get onto the uh, EPA website and you go into their um, 
uh, FGAS uh, link. They will give you all the information in terms of, of uh, guidelines, uh, contractor guidelines, end user guidelines, um, uh, industry guidelines, and so on. Okay, so getting back to this, I'm going to knock off my selenite. So my selenite is de-energized. That means that only the refrigerant will go as far as the selenite valve. It won't go anywhere else. So this this gauge line won't won't rise. So again, I keep an eye on my weighing scales as well, and I I want to make sure that I don't overcharge the system. Uh, so therefore, I would know what the weight of refrigerant is in prior to me actually charging the system, um, and then I would bomb charge. If I don't know, then it's up to me. If it's not labeled, it's up to me then to weigh it in commission it properly and then decide so then it would be a judgment call in that point of view from from that point of view so you can see i've just opened up you can see the bubbles going through it's through the high side so there's no liquid getting to the to the actual uh, vapor side remember again what i said to you when this unit was starting so i don't know what way to put into this unit you can see my gauge going down 10.3 or whatever remember when i said to you that when this was at standing pressure it was at just about 10 bar so i'm going to go by pressure just at this because we are at the same temperature as it was when i looked at it so if i decide that i need to figure out how much more refrigerant goes in or how much little refrigerant goes in i just close off my bottle again so by just closing off my manifold i can see there i'm five six seven eight about eight bar so i'm getting close to to uh, what it would be or what it was and you can see how much I've moved in. So we're now gone from 10.63 to 10.23. So that's the amount of refrigerant. So I'd write that down and I do my calculations so that I could put on the label how much refrigerant. But I'm not done yet. This is just the initial bomb charge. So what's happened now is the pressure here is equalized with the pressure in the bottle. We can see in our sight glass and our manifold, no more liquid refrigerant is now entering into the system. So now at this stage, I have to run the system. And then I have to decide whether I need to add more refrigerant to this system or whether I have it perfectly charged. Now, under normal jobs, under normal circumstances, the liquid receiver, so on a regular job, the liquid receiver is supposed to be sized to contain the maximum amount of refrigerant that that system will hold. These receivers, unfortunately, because of, of uh, training purposes, have been oversized. So I can't just fill that receiver. Now, if I did want to fill that receiver, then again, I just fully front seat my access service valve. I'd fill the receiver, but I'm filling the receiver and the condenser. Uh, so the refrigerant will be between the receiver, the condenser, and the discharge of the compressor. I fill the receiver, and uh, I, get, oh, well, I would try to fill the receiver. But again, it depends on much pressure is in your bottle or, or whether your bottle is fully charged or half charged or uh, full or empty or whatever but i'd, I'd uh, bomb charge my liquid receiver and then i'd run up my unit and, and uh, once i know that i haven't exceeded the amount of refrigerant that my uh, receiver will hold i know i haven't overcharged it so that's a video for next week where we again we'll go along and uh, we will start up this unit we'll energize the solenoid valve so i'll do it now just to show you energizing the solenoid valve so if I energize the sunlight valve, now you can see the refrigerant goes through to the low side. And now you can see the pressures equalizing across. And then this is going to help me even determine whether or not I need to add more refrigerant. But the reality is, the only way I'm going to know that I need to add more refrigerant is by knowing my pressure temperature relationships on my condenser side and on my evaporator side. And the only way I know a system is fully charged is by knowing my subcooled value and my superheat value. And they're things that I can only take when the system is up and running. So I'm now ready to switch on this unit, but you can now see where our pressures are just a little bit over six and a half bar. Um, either side equalizing so the standing pressure on this system at the moment is six and a half bar and if we remember from earlier videos we noted that before we took the refrigerant out of it the standing pressure was about uh, nine bar uh, between nine and nine and a half ten bar so again we'll uh, run this unit up that's next video for next week so come back um, and uh, you can see me running it up and the next phase for me will be to start to uh, flash in the refrigerant the liquid refrigerant into the system um, and then commission it from there on in. So thanks for watching. See you next week.